Hi, and welcome to the Nexus Dental Systems YouTube channel. Over the next couple of months, you're going to see some great content coming out here on our channel to talk about Nexus Dental Systems and all the things we do here. Now, this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart because this isn't just talking about your teeth, it's talking about your sleep. See, sleep apnea is something that affects people all over the world and of all ages, not just big guys like me. It affects women, it affects children. And when you don't have good quality sleep, well, you've probably been there. <laughs> you know what happens. You can get irritable, you can get cranky. It can affect your health and your well being and even your mental health. It just deteriorates over time because struggling with sleep is something that none of us want to do. If you've ever snored in your sleep or had somebody say to you, hey, you know, you wake up multiple times throughout the night. If you're one of those guys or maybe even women that has to get up multiple times during the night and use the restroom, it might not just be a weak bladder. It could be a challenge with sleep apnea in your sleep. We're going to chat here on this show about the different types of characteristics, the different types of patients that are affected by sleep apnea. And our audience is really going to be you, the consumer, so that you know the questions to ask your dental professional in order to get help for possible sleep apnea that you might have, or at least do a sleep test to find out. And if you're a dentist or a dental professional, we want to give you information as well on how you can help your patients have a better night's sleep. All right. Well, today we are talking with Brett Brocky, and he is the founder of Nexus Dental. Brett, Thanks for this conversation. We've been having a great time talking about your background and history. We've been talking about the Steelers, which is always a good thing to talk about. Maybe not this year, but the, the legacy of the Steelers. <laughs> we can do which, it. I believe we'll in see, it. We'll see. We'll see, right? Well, listen, right. let's let's talk about teeth because I think that that's the purpose of us being here today is to talk about dental and particularly dental sleep solutions because I don't think a lot of people really understand what your dentist can do to help you with your, you know, to, to have better sleep. But let's first talk about your background in dental. Like, how did you get into this? Is this like you were born uh, into the business or how did this work, Brad? Grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, my father was 20 years uh, military, a Vietnam veteran, original Delta Force, 5th Group Special Forces, 82nd Airborne. He was 100% the real deal. So we had a very stringent side of military there. But then, of course, my mom, she was a nurse prior to her 35-year career as the head dental assistant at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Oh. So you kind of stood at attention and got your teeth cleaned in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had... We had machine gun turrets like, protecting from sugar smugglers <laughs> coming in. You know? You've had an interest in dental in your whole life, right? I mean, that's something that sort of comes from your yeah, roots. It, it happened. So I go, I go through, you know, all my uh, adolescent years into teen years and into college for a few years, and then I went in the military myself. Um, never thought in a million years that I was going to end up in dental, but in 1995, 96, right around that time period, I landed a job with Schick Technologies, which was one of the first digital radiography systems in the United States. I took a passion with that. I thought it was a great opportunity, learned a lot about imaging, uh, became a certified radiology technician and understood this, this radiology piece, but it wasn't quite ready as my mom actually taught me later. I took it down to Fort Bragg the systems. They weren't quite up to par yet. Mm -hmm. Um, so then I, I ended up going into, um, some financial services along with, uh, call centers but I stayed connected to dental. And in 2002, I started with a company at the time it was called Practice Works, which later became Kodak Dental Systems. And then it evolved to CareStream, uh, which is what we all know it as today is CareStream Dental. I had a, a great run there from 02 to 14 when I, when I parted on great terms. Uh, and that's what led me into, I think, what we're going to talk about today and what happened yeah. to me. Yeah. So let's get into that a little bit. I mean, how did you get, how did you make that transition? So you, you got a little bit of a background, but you worked in some other things. Then you came back to the industry. And then what, I mean, was this an entrepreneurial bug that you sort of got or how did that work? I had just um, knew that I was going to leave corporate, um, the corporate world to try to go pursue financial planning in a, in a real proper fashion. I, I was licensed um, with Northwestern Mutual Financial, huge firm in the world uh, to help people. And I just wanted to go help people understand money because I grew up with really none and yeah. not understanding how it works, like how to save, how to, 
how to plan, how to budget, how to have life insurance, little things like that, that I thought a lot of our, my immediate circle of friends were missing. When this happened, simultaneously, I was told, you know, that I'm choking and gasping in my sleep and something was mm. not right. And I, I always had this as normal, that it was okay to get up and go to the bathroom multiple times. It was okay to wake up every hour and answer an email because yeah. I had what, what, what I considered a self-diagnosed situation called ABS, active brain syndrome. I made mm. that up <laughs> in my mind, because as humans, what I found later now with research at past 10 years we all self-diagnose. Oh, I think I'm having this problem because of that. It's very common yeah. between the, the human and not wanting to go to a doctor and just trying to figure it all out. Well, so, Web, Web, WebMD made a business out of that, right? Right. <laughs> they, did. I did go there. They, just, yeah. they just took it. So they, they just took it to the next. Instead of instead of you and you and your your buddies guessing, now you can get an expert to help you guess. <laughs> yeah, and and so I took a shot, and and basically what I started to realize is I knew I had some form of, of sleep apnea. I just didn't know what, and I wanted to avoid that. I started going to medical appointments with my primary care who couldn't really answer anything because they're not trained in sleep right. very much at all. Right. And they sent me to specialists. So I went to ENT, pulmonology, cardiology, back and forth between the PCP. I was told by somebody, you should go see a dentist in there. I started asking dentist questions. This went on for four months before I finally landed in a dreaded place that I was fearing, which was the sleep lab yeah. with all the wires and they tell you to go to sleep. But the part that really got me and that changed everything right there on the dime was a sleep technician looked at me and he kind of just said, Hey, I'm going to have you go to sleep tonight. I want you to do your best. Just sleep on your back. You'll be good to go. When you start snoring, I'll bring this machine in and we'll make it all better. And it's fine. Yeah. I kind of looked at him and I questioned that. I said, I don't sleep on my back. I sleep on my side. And he goes, yeah. no, no, it's just how it works. It's insurance driven. This is what they require. Now this part, this is the part where the integrity piece of me, it questions it. And, and I have an old sixth sense that when my gut turns and it, you know, something is wrong, we all yeah. have this, this compass in us. I did not want to do the, what he said. I said, I'm going to try to sleep as naturally in here. So they get a real readout. And they did. And I stopped breathing 36 times an hour in this in this sleep session. And when I woke up that morning to leave, uh, the sleep technician did not like me. He was mad that I didn't sleep on my back. And the reason uh -huh. I found out later was is because there's a thing called CPAP coaching. Right. And CPAP coaching is prevalent in places. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the CPAP. It's just I couldn't wear a CPAP. I couldn't wear something in clothes on my face right. as as a lot of people that get these things prescribed. So I left there with, with a lot of questions and I went back to the dentist. I went back to my doctors. I went back to the everybody and nobody could give me a straight answer. So I went to one of my colleagues in the dental space who knew about sleep apnea. He's a very near and dear friend, like a brother to me. Kevin Bradley is his name and he's, he's phenomenal. Kevin said, Brett, I think you could probably go find out about this. So I, I went to one of my dentists in North Carolina, four and a half hours South of me. He said, listen, he's right. I can help you but I don't know all the devices. I don't know about the medical billing. Mm -hmm. I'm having trouble with getting people home sleep tested versus going to a lab. I'm having trouble with all of these things. Maybe you can come and, and show me. Mm -hmm. So I commuted four and a half hours every Tuesday wow. from 2014 to 2016 down to his practice and worked all day and all night, stayed at his house, figured out what was working, what wasn't. We screened over 10,000 patients in a period of two years. And I drive home on Wednesday and I kept making this recipe. Once we had it going and we finally had people that were screening, were testing, were getting cases accepted regardless of their deductibles. And we started getting them treated and having success with that. He said, you should go try this at another office. So <laughs> I started. I started one, one preferably closer to your home, Brett. <laughs> he just didn't want to give you the spare bedroom anymore. He was, he was pushing you out the door. It my luxury to choose, right? right? Doctors yeah. all over the country wanted me to come there. And I noticed there were no other businesses in our industry. I respect all of them out there that, that are trying to help. But I wasn't selling a bill of goods on the weekend because a lot of dental seminars kind of do that to you. You go show up at a weekend, you come back to your office on Monday and you go, what do I do? Well, I wanted to be the guy that was hands-on after you said, yes, I'm going to help. I want help. I'm going to yeah. come help you. Hmm. And Dream Sleep was, my, was the brand that was born out of that recipe of coaching and consulting and helping people do this. That started in 2016. Subsequently, I probably myself went into about 150 plus offices over 
a period of time between 16 and 19 and 20 and would go all over the country to help and attend trade shows and attend these offices training and get in scrubs and get in the trenches and talk to patients and tell them, you know, the things that, that would trigger them to want to get tested because they were at risk and they just didn't know how to unlock that. And that became a very, very rewarding experience to help people like that and save lives. That was awesome. You know, that's the root yeah. level ground boots on the ground. Well, and it's funny because you're not a dentist by trade, right? I mean, that you came to this because you, you had a little bit of familiarity from your history, but also because you had a problem, <laughs> you know, True. and that a problem solution. I mean, that is the greatest, th that's the entrepreneurial way is you can't do it yourself. Cause I, I actually had sleep apnea myself. I was on the machine. I, mine was 80 times an hour. So tell you how bad that was or 80 times. A, yeah. And 80 times an hour. I mean, I was waking up every minute and just couldn't get any sleep and kept gaining weight and struggled with this. But I like you struggled with the machine. And it wasn't until after a couple of years of using the machine, the first time I ever used the machine, I fell asleep. I woke up the next day and I was like, I think somebody had knocked me out because I was probably the first eight hours of sleep I had had in years. But, but I also got introduced. I mentioned it to my dentist one time and said, you know, I'd lost some weight. I didn't really snore very much anymore. And except for when I had a cocktail and my dentist was like, there's a solution for this. He's like, you're diagnosed with sleep apnea. We can fix this problem. And to this day, I still use a dental appliance because awesome. I sleep way better. Like, even though I don't particularly have apnea anymore, I'm not, you know, I don't have the textbook case. I still use it because I sleep a lot better and my wife sleeps a lot better too, which is, I think one of the selling points of any sleep apnea treatment right. is you don't understand you're, you're doing a lot of damage to your own body, but you're also harming the people around okay. you. That's right. And uh, the stats on it are about 120 million Americans estimated by the CDC's uh, own stats is that this is the most undiagnosed disease in the United States, at least to the top three killers of the U.S., which is heart disease, stroke and diabetes at 70 percent or greater. Each of those that are connected to sleep apnea. That's how crazy it is. I mean, think about this for a minute, Derek. You need three things to live on planet Earth, oxygen, food and water. So, so here we are, we're going to knock ourselves out by falling asleep and deprive ourselves of this number one element called oxygen. We decide we're going to go to sleep and not breathe. So we've talked about sleep apnea. We know that this is a problem that traditionally we think about in males, particularly larger frame males, guys like me have a couple extra pounds around the waist, but women suffer with sleep apnea as well. Many times it's undiagnosed and many times Women have a hard time getting diagnosed because their doctors just assume that it's something else. It's something hormonal. It's something that's not about their sleep. Uh, it, it, and that causes real frustration. Many times they're told, no, it can't be that. And they have a harder time getting a sleep study done. This next story, we're going to talk with Lisa. Lisa is the CMO here at Nexus. And she had a journey that many of you might be able to relate to. She had a very hard time getting diagnosed with sleep apnea. She talked to multiple doctors. They told her, no, it can't be that. It has to be something else. But in the end, it was sleep related. So let's listen and understand this interview, see how Lisa dealt with this and, and take from this the ability to take control of your health, talk to your doctor specifically about these issues and get the proper diagnosis. If you want to get a truly, truly, truly accurate, and I'm not a doctor, but yeah. if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty of how you're sleeping, a sleep lab is really the place to go. It's very uncomfortable. And my biggest thing with it was that red light that was above my head. I oh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Didn't really, I mean, all the wires were really uncomfortable and, you know, they hooked you up to like 100 wires, but it was the it was the light above my head. I'm like, I'm being watched and that freaked me out. So that's why I couldn't yeah. sleep. Maybe it's just my personality, but, yeah. you know, I'm very pushy with my doctors and we have to be our own advocates. We just truly do. Cause you know, by the time you go through the rigmarole of being diagnosed with something, as far as I'm concerned, right. You know, in this day and age, you could be yeah. dead. So you have to, and literally with sleep apnea, you could be dead. So mm -hmm. you've got to be your own advocate. You've got to um, ask your doctor, you know, talk to your doctor, open up the dialogue about it. Talk about the, the sleep test, ask for an upward test, ask for the test, you know, um, answer the questionnaire. It's online. I mean, everybody could Google anything on Dr. Google these days. Those tests are online. If you feel like you have sleep apnea, take a test online, take it to your doctor, you know, mm, tell them, look, this is, I, I took this. I think I have sleep apnea and I need, I need a prescription for a sleep lab or, or um, a home sleep test. It really is about educating the doctors. It, it really yeah. is. Um, unfortunately, 
I had, I had airway issues. I had bruxism. I had, you know, all this stuff going on and he never, ever asked me about sleep apnea. And this yeah. is, I'm talking 12 years ago. Yeah. Never, yeah. never brought it up to me. And I, I thought, wow. Well, just think of the peace of mind. Let, let, let's, let's just say maybe you're a female, you're listening to this and you're like, uh, that's probably not me. What does it actually hurt to go and have a sleep study done at home and to find out you don't have it? It doesn't. I mean, oh, wow. I mean, it doesn't. It, 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 it's not going to cost you anything. It's gonna, you know, it 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 it's going to take a couple of hours of your time to find out if you're if you've got this. And and I I do think you connect the dots. Once you get diagnosed, you're like, whoa, how long has this been going on? Oh. Maybe maybe my falling asleep behind the wheel, you know, five years ago had something to do with. Like you don't, you just don't. You start to make all the connections. You have that aha moment. Oh yeah, that absolutely. Happens. And I I can tell you, I can put ten of my girlfriends from high school in in a room, and nine of them. The biggest complaint for them right now is they don't sleep. They don't sleep. Nine out of ten of those women would say, "I see it on Facebook and social media all the time." Yeah. They're all complaining. Oh, I'm up at two a.m. I'm so up at tired. Yeah. Uh, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And now my first thing is go get a sleep test. Go get a sleep test. I mean, I sound like a you know, I sound like a broken record, but it really is my mission. It really is a personal mission to me to in a soapbox to make sure that people do this. You know, and my mom. I mean, it's a very very personal situation. She, my mom's got congestive heart failure. She's eighty five years old. Her heart is in horrible condition right now because of her untreated sleep apnea. So I'm going to talk with Dr. Steve Karstensen next. Steve has deep experience in, in dealing with sleep apnea and dental appliances. And we know that it affects adults. We know that it affects men. We know that it can affect women. And Lisa's given us that perspective. But can it affect kids? Let's talk to Dr. Steve about that. So I started treating these, these patients with these appliances to help them breathe at night. It was so much fun. And it was great and loving it and learning about medicine and all these cool things for me. But as, as time went on, uh, what happened is, is that the appliances are working great on these 40, 50, 60-year-olds. Hmm. Then we started paying attention and realized hmm. that, wow, these 40, 50, 60-year-olds were at one time four, five, and six. So how do you do it way? And there's some recent research has shown that 100% of the people that have obstructive sleep apnea as adults have some form of anatomy problems. Hmm. When does anatomy problems start? When they're four, five, and six. So that got me started thinking about kids and, and hooking up with a, all these uh, other people in my profession that are pediatric specialists and orthodontists and people who really understand children. And that, man, I can't think of anything more exciting in my life than trying to impress upon our profession and need to see these four, five, and six-year-olds and uh, get them started on a better health path. Well, and listen, let's be honest. I mean, if you have one bad night's sleep, you're grouchy. If you have 40 years of bad night's sleeps, <laughs> well, you're, you're going to have a physical reaction to that. There's going to be health problems that are associated with it. Uh, there has to be. I mean, we've all had that one night where, you know, especially as I'm getting older, and now I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I can't move my arm. You know? but. Yeah. But 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 just that one that one eight hour session that's restless is not good. But when you extend that over a lifetime, it really can cause a lot of serious issues. So thanks so much for getting into that pediatric piece. Let's talk a little bit about how you work with children and and what you see differently and what are sort of telltale signs that maybe maybe you need to because the kid's not going to ask right? It may, maybe mom or dad needs to make that, you know, make, make an inquiry of their dentist, but it'd be good for the dentist to know what to ask. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about dealing with children and how that works. Sure. Well, I got to give you some context here. Of course, obstructive sleep apnea was discovered in overweight old men. And, mm -hmm. and as that uh, now has started to fade away. And so we realize that everybody of any weight, height and everything else can have obstructive sleep apnea as an adult. And then we start thinking, okay, what about these kids? Well, if our thinking pattern is the same as we thought of for adults, we got to think that, well, you know, we got to measure for obstructive sleep apnea. Well, that's not the thing. Now, kids do have OSA, obstructive sleep apnea, but that's not their problem. That's their symptom. That's their sign. That's the thing that comes after the problem of that. Remember what I said about the research saying that 100% of, of uh, people with OSA have an yeah. anatomy problem? So now let's look at the structure and function of a four-year-old. And mm -hmm. if a four-year-old is breathing through their mouth, that means that their tongue is in the floor of their mouth, not in their palate. 
And if your mouth is open and you're breathing through your mouth and your cheeks are pinching that palate that's growing at four, guess what? The palate's not going to grow wide enough. And if the palate doesn't grow wide enough, the nose is compromised because the, the palate shoots up and pinches into the nose space. So now we have a growth. We don't have a breathing problem. We have a growth problem. We have a shape problem. We have a structural issue. And then we get these kids that are breathing through their mouth. They get a cold. They're out allergic to something. And so their nose plugs up. And, and actually, this goes back to infancy, but we're not going to talk about this, the youngest ages. But it goes back to their young ages. And they have this habit develop of, you know, just slack jaws and their mouth is open and they can breathe pretty easy that way they feel. And so the nose doesn't develop well. Dr. Stu Backer, one of our ENT doctors that wrote a book about this, says that, wow, if you don't breathe through your nose, then the structure inside your nose does not develop the way it's supposed to. And now you're off to a lifetime of a compromised nose pathway. And so now we have a structural problem. We have a habit forming problem where their mouth is open to breathing through their mouth. And so that habit needs to be corrected. Now, are though either one of those diagnosable in overnight sleep test in some hospital where the kid goes in and has 27 wires put on them and their mom is worried about them? That's not how we diagnose that. We diagnose that by looking at these kids from a structural and function standpoint. Where only pediatric dentists and de other dentists who see kids can evaluate the structure. There's no other part of medicine anywhere that can look at the structure of a four-year-old and see how that jaw is developing. Myofunctional therapy colleagues can look at the, fun at the function of it, how their tongue is held and all these other things um, in, in amazing detail. So we have this great way that has nothing to do with a diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea. You know, I think as a parent listening to this, you're going, oh boy, I, I hadn't thought about this. I mean, we, we, we don't think about how that has such a long-term effect. on. We know that what we eat has a long-term effect on us, but let's be honest. I mean, there's nothing more important than uh, breathing. <laughs> and what happens now is our, our physician colleagues, like every other one of us, have pattern memories. And so a child walks into a pediatric office and she looks at that kid and the mom says, oh, they're, they're disruptive in class. And the, the pediatric uh, physician says, well, you know, their brain says, that's just like all the other 100 kids yeah. last week. Right. And so here's your pills, because it works. We give your kid these pills and they, they behave better. Well, you know, what are the pills? The pills are stimulants. Why, why does a kid need a stimulant if they're over behaving? It's because their brains aren't ready for the day. They're sleepy. And mm -hmm. so if the stimulant goes to the section of the brain that isn't ready for the day and, and, and lights it up. Now the kid can make cognitive behavioral choices that they were unable to while that part of the brain was still in a stupor. Hmm. So what we want to do is fix the first problem, which is why is that part of the brain still not ready for the day? And that's where quality sleep comes in. Let me summarize for a moment what we learned in this episode. I think the most surprising thing for me is I did know that sleep apnea affected guys like me. A little bit extra weight around the center and uh, maybe aren't in the shape that I was years ago. But I was really surprised to learn how much sleep apnea affects women and how much sleep apnea affects children. Uh, this is a serious issue. Uh, sleep is an essential part of our lives. And if we're not getting good quality sleep, well, think about it. Have you ever had a night where you haven't gotten good sleep? Just one night, how irritable, how cranky, how much of a brain fog you get. Imagine over and over and over every night struggling to sleep, not getting enough breath in your sleep. I just had a sleep study done this last week through Nexus, and I was surprised. I slept, I felt like I slept pretty good, although I did wake up a little bit more than I thought I would. I've been using a CPAP machine and I have a dental appliance, so I know what good sleep is like now. I could tell the difference pretty quickly that I wasn't sleeping as well as I was with my dental appliance. So those are the lessons that we're going to need to take away from this episode is just because you don't fit that stereotypical big guy doesn't mean that sleep apnea doesn't affect your life. You know your body better than anyone else. And if you're experiencing symptoms of tiredness, of brain fog, of maybe just not being able to think as quickly as you should, of feeling tired all the time and wanting to take naps and go to bed early and all those kind of things. We all know what I'm talking about. Or if maybe your child is experiencing symptoms where they're struggling to learn or struggling to socialize or falling asleep often, it's worth it 
talk to your dentist, talk to your dental professional about having a sleep study done, learn more about sleep apnea and find out for sure if sleep apnea affects you. Okay, on the next episode, we're going to talk more about the origin story of Nexus. We're going to continue to interview these great doctors and guests that they've lined up that really are experts in the treatment of sleep apnea. And we're going to continue to learn more and more about how sleep apnea affects our lives, how it can be treated, and if you're a consumer, how to get tested. If you're a dentist, you can learn a lot more about how you maybe can bring this into your practice. All right, well, until next time. In the human way.